everyone, it's April of Hair 101 and I'm going to show you another color technique that I usually do and it's called a paint between. And this is really good to do on, well anyone really, this is a good way to get all of the hair colored. Maybe they want to have their browns a little bit more rich than their natural hair color and then still have some highlights. So it's, it's pretty much doing an all over color with two hair colors and so there's no hairs that are left out that are natural. And so it's a really good option for anyone that's going gray because it covers all of the gray hair with either the light or the dark color. And it's really fun. So I'm going to show you how to do that. I'm just going to ask her really quick what, from what we did last time if she wants to change anything. So you want to do maybe a little bit more blonde or brown blonde this time than we did last time? Yeah, I'll probably like two thirds blonde and one third brown. Okay. That sounds good because we might have done one like that we did last time. Yeah, I can't remember. So yeah, we'll, we'll lighten this up a little bit more. Um, and for her color, I usually do like a 6N for her brown, and then the light is just, I'm going to use the Hermesi um, bleach color, or the bleach cream. Okay, so when you mix this Hermesi, you're doing, you're doing 20 grams of the color, which is about four strips on the bowl, to every 40 milliliters of developer. So that's the ratio to mix it. And if you buy this color, it tells you on the little paper in the package how to mix it up. All right, so I'm using the 6NN. And they're, they're the double pigments on the Redken line. They're color fusion. They're really good for grays. It colors really well on gray hair. Um, she doesn't really have a lot of gray, but it gives a really pretty color and I'm out of my regular level six and this is really good too so it works. Just use what I have. So I did a fourth of a tube of that and I'm using I'm using 10 developer because she doesn't really have a lot of grays. If she did have a lot of grays I would use 20. So the very first time you do this technique if they had virgin hair and you were doing this technique you would be pulling the blondes out and sticking the lightener on the entire section of that blonde. And that, so that would be really easy to um, keep all of the ends protected from the paint between that you're going to do. But since her hair's already been lightened, when I take these blonde pieces out, you have to make sure that all of the ends stay inside of the foil. So in order to keep all of these ends safe from the other color, I just take a bunch of conditioner and put it in a bowl and use it like color. And I'm going to paint those onto her blonde ends. And so it's gonna be giving her ends like a deep condition also while we're putting the color in. You do have to make sure not to get the conditioner on the bleach cause that won't be good. But I just fold the foil down and then I stick it in. And then I always put the lightener on from the regrowth, from the scalp, all the way until it hits that line of regrowth or the, the color change line. And then with the, the conditioner, you can just do just the ends. And that way when you fold it up, you, you can fold this line to that middle section that's dry and keep the bleach and the conditioner separate from each other. And then you don't have to worry about the paint between color getting on those ends and making them dark. So that's the little trick that will help that well, that's the little trick that will help you out with this color technique, the paint between. So that's what I'm gonna do on these two back sections all the way up, and then I'll check back with you for the top. We're gonna leave out all of the browns, and on the blondes, you retouch the regrowth area and then put the conditioner on the ends just to keep it tight in that foil. Because on a normal just weave, you'd be leaving those ends kind of like a tail out the side and that will not work for a paint between. So make sure you are getting those in with either conditioner or if you can wind the hair up and just tuck it in there. But I like using the conditioner for the whole like deep condition idea, that's kind of fun. But sometimes if I'm really trying to go fast, I'll just wind the hair up and stick it in a foil and make sure that none of the ends are poking out. But that does take a little bit more practice, so this is definitely easier for beginners.
So definitely through the top, I'm really taking extra special care to make sure that I'm taking some of those blonde pieces out. The back of it seemed really blonde anyway. I think it's more on the top that we had some of the, the extra dark in there. So I'm going to do the lightener on the light part and then the conditioner on the blonde and then sandwich this foil. Whenever I do the two together like that, I sandwich it just to make sure that those two chemicals or whatever are not bleeding together. Okay, so I need to mix up some more of the lightener and I'm already probably, I'm more than halfway done. I'm probably two thirds done. And since I want it to go a little bit faster when I mix it up this time, I'm going to use 30 volume bleach just so that it can catch up to the 20 volume bleach that we used in the back. And that way everything will process faster and yeah, that's my little tip of the day, I guess. If you have to mix up some more bleach, mix it up a little bit stronger than the last batch if you're almost done. So these brown pieces up here, I'm just gonna cut them in half. I'm cutting them in half because she wants to be a little bit more blonde. And so I figure if I cut them in half, then she'll be more blonde. <laughs> All right, and I always switch over to the front right here because I like to get really close to the face and I take these sections really small because usually there's a little wid widow's peak and if you try to stretch it in there too much, then it will just not have color on the roots and not look good. So since it's right by the face, take that extra teeny little piece and make it look right. The widow's peak is when the hair comes down to like a little point right here. It usually comes, not everyone has it, but usually people have a little bit of like a round shape right there if they don't have the widow's peak. So I always take really small sections right here up by the face, just to make sure I can get close to those roots. Alrighty, so now I'm taking, and you know what? I was wrong. I mean, it's hard to admit that I was wrong, but it's better to mix up the brown after you put all the blondes in because then the color's not sitting there oxidizing. I'm gonna put a little bit more in here. But, um, so yeah, now would be the time to be mixing up your brown color. So, pretend like I just barely mixed this up. It will still work just fine, but fresh color does work really great. A little bit better than color that's been sitting here for 30 minutes. Okay, and then you're gonna put gloves on for this next part. Okay, so put your gloves on. You really should wear gloves when you're gonna be doing color like this. It's not good for your skin, it can absorb into your body. Always wear gloves when you're touching the chemical under your skin. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna start in the front, and you just go to that first section that is brown, and then you're gonna use a clip, and I just stand all the other foils straight up and down, and then put the clip through like six of them, and that just holds them up and down. And then you reach in, and if you have one that's right against the face, you can go in and put another foil in that one, just so you don't put the color smashed right against their forehead, because that's not a good idea, but and then you just go in here, and if there's any little bleeders, you can just dust them with the color. And this just takes care of all of those ends. And if the hair is long enough to reach past their face, you need to put that in the foil on these first few that go forward, just so that it's not hitting their face with the color. And you're gonna go through all the foils in between, hence the name, Paint Between, and you're going to just paint it in. And make sure you get it really close to the scalp because especially if they have gray, they're not gonna wanna have gray roots still when they're done. So make sure that you're getting this nice and close to the scalp. And this is a lot better for the hair than coloring it all dark and then bleaching it out every time because that's another technique you could do on someone with really gray hair is you could color all your hair brown and then go through and foil a bunch of highlights. But then if you keep doing that, then you're just recoloring and then re-bleaching their hair so many times that their hair is gonna be fried. So that's why I like this technique better. 
The other option would be to foil up everything. And that I think is just wasting foils and taking up too much time. So this is faster than that. And I am putting it on the entire shaft of hair, even if it's already brown, just to refresh the ends. Because if they fade it out, then might as well just put it everywhere. I've gone through all of the foils and done the paint between on everything. And so the last step, especially if you have gray hair, this is something you cannot skip. If you skip this, they're gonna have these gray stripes all over their head. So you have to take the color and get a good amount in there. And you're gonna paint on the edges of everything in all of the parting. And if it gets a little bit on the bleach, guess what? That's okay because it's better than having gray hairs. Trust me on this one. So you're gonna go through and then even along the face, right here, you're gonna just paint the color. Make sure you get all of these little hairs. And you can go back through after we're done and wipe it with a little cloth and make sure, but you need to really make sure you get every edge. Here's another parting right in here. You see how it's dry right in here? You need to paint the color in there. Okay, so now that you've heard my little spiel, do that everywhere. Make sure you don't miss any. Double check, because you don't want to have stripies. If they don't have gray hair and their hair is pretty much gonna be the same color as the color you're doing anyway, it's not as big of a deal, but still do it, because you don't want a chance having a different color stripe anywhere on the head. All right, on this side over here. And again, along the face, the hairline. And sometimes you have to lift the foils up a little bit like this to get in there. You just kind of lift them up like that and you can see better. Okay, so once you've done all of that, you should have that done. And so now it's time to process. And you can process this room temperature for, well, you're gonna look at the box color and see how long it says. Usually they say 30 to 45 minutes. Um, or if you have a faster color, you can put a cap on it and process it under the dryers, which I usually do with her. But if you're doing um, a really heavy gray coverage, you're gonna wanna make sure that you process the full 35 or 40 minutes, whatever it says. So we're gonna do the, cake, the shower cap. And the reason why you need the shower cap is because if you put the color underneath the dryer without this on it, it's gonna dry out and it won't process. It will just be crusty. So make sure you keep it moist. Tuck in all of those loose hairs. And then you can process under the dryer. Okay, hey, last step before you process, I just take a little bit of water on a towel and I just follow along the, the round of the face and the ears, and I just wipe up any little bits of color that might be on their skin. Because nobody wants to go home with black stain on their skin or their ears when they're done getting yep. their hair colored. And even along the neckline, you can even do it down here if you see any. Okay, looks good. So I'm just make sure you always test Check the color before you rinse it. It looks light enough for me. I think that's good. We're gonna go ahead and rinse her out. Push back. All right, I didn't use a toner on her because it was just a retouch and her ends are still already really pale light and the roots look good. So she's just gonna be 
how it was. And I'm gonna go ahead and dry it up and do a trim. All right, so we are all done with our paint between. And here's the end results. We lightened it up a little bit more through the top and let me show you the back. It's just a really pretty blended two color hair color. And there are no grays anywhere, even though, guess what guys, she doesn't have any grays anyway. But if she did, there still wouldn't be any. Awesome, right? And you can see in here that we got all the color everywhere and we're good. So try it, let me know how you guys like it and we'll see you next time, bye.